Yes, the SAT has a favorite triangle and we'll be deep diving into that today. Hey guys, it's Jen, your test prep tutor, and today we're going to be talking all about special right triangles. Now, what makes these so special? Basically, these triangles have properties that make certain calculations a whole lot simpler. So you may already know a couple off the top of your head, 45, 45, 90 triangle or the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Basically how these work is if you know a triangle has these particular angle measurements, then you already know the relationship between their various sides and you can calculate those very easily. Today, we're going to be talking about another type of special right triangle called a Pythagorean triple. These are basically triangles whose sides are in ratios of whole numbers. The smallest one that we have is called the three, four, five triangle. Here we have a three, four, five triangle. And what we know is that if the sides of a triangle have the ratio three to four to five, then we have a right triangle. I can also scale this triangle as big as I want using whole numbers and the ratio will still hold. So in effect, what I have is a three X to four X to five X relationship where X is a whole number as big as you want. What I would recommend you guys do is to memorize these triangles up to a scale factor of five. Get really familiar with the side lengths so you can recognize when they're being applied on the exam. Next, I wanna work through some practice problems together so you can see this principle in action. All of the problems I'm doing today are from official college board exams, so I would encourage you to pause the video every time I introduce a new question so you can attempt it on your own. All of my solutions will involve the three, four, five triangle in some way. The first problem I wanna do here is from practice test three in the no calculator section, and this is number 20. The question says, in the triangle ABC, the measure of angle B is 90 degrees, BC is 16, and AC is 20. If I'm taking this test for real, at this point, I would draw a figure to represent what was given to me. I like to do this as much as possible so I can visualize the question. So I've already drawn a right triangle here, and I'm going to label it BCA, where BC is 16 and AC is 20. All right. If you took a look at the chart I gave you earlier, hopefully you'll recognize Hypotenuse of 20, long leg of 16, this is nothing more than a scaled version of that three, four, five right triangle. It is this one right here where X is equal to four. Okay, so that means I already know the length of AB is going to be 12. I don't need to mess with the Pythagorean theorem and risk making an arithmetic mistake. Moving on to the other givens, triangle DEF is similar to triangle ABC. Similar is a, a trigger word, a keyword, so I'll underline that. Where vertices DEF correspond to vertices ABC respectively, and each side of triangle DEF is one third the length of the corresponding side of triangle ABC. Okay, what is the value of sine F? I always like to circle my question so I know I'm not solving for the wrong thing. A lot of people make that mistake. I'm looking for sine F. Of course, you can draw yourself another triangle DEF and you can, you know, divide all the sides of ABC by three and then solve for sine of F that way. But I think there's an easier way that I'm going to show you. So the first thing I want to recognize here is F corresponds with C. So if I'm looking for the sine of F, that is no different than the sine of C because it's just a ratio. Okay, so sine of C is 12 over 20. If you simplify that, you should get 3 or 5. But if you remember, we already said that triangle ABC is a, reduces down to a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So if you knew that, you didn't even have to simplify. You just know AB to AC is going to be 3 fifths. Let's try another question. This one is number 36 from practice exam number seven, and it's in the calculator section, section four. In the figure above, 
tangent of b is 3 fourths. I want to make a very important note here, that when we give you tangent of an angle, you have no idea what the side measures are. Tangent of b equals 3 fourths does not mean the short leg measures 3 and the long leg measures 4. Why? Because tangent is a ratio. The side lengths could just as easily be 6 and 8 or 9 and 12, and those still reduce down to 3 fourths. So you want to be very careful here. You know nothing about the side measurements, but what you do know is that both triangle BDE and BAC have side lengths that are in the ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. Okay, so we'll make use of that in just a bit. Let's keep noting the givens here. BC is 15. That means this hypotenuse here measures 15, and DA is 4. Okay, the question is DE, so I'll call that X. Because we just said that these triangles are 3, 4, 5 triangles, if we come back to our chart here, handy chart, when the hypotenuse is 15, the short leg is going to measure 9, and the long leg is going to measure 12. Okay, so AC is 9, and then BA is 12, but DA is already 4, so you know BD is 8. BDE, remember, also reduces down to a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so if I'm looking for DE, all I need to do is set the proportion x to 8 is equal to 3 over 4. Simplify that by multiplying the 8 over, and you get x is equal to 6, and there is your answer. Let's do one more together. This is number 31 from practice test 9, section 4. Okay, in the xy plane above, the circle has center h comma k, and the radius is 10. What is the value of k? So that's a pretty straightforward question. Anytime I deal with a circle, keep this in mind, circle has two really important components, a center and a radius. As soon as you have a center point and you know the length of the radius, you've got yourself a circle. So whenever I'm presented with a circle problem, the first thing I want to do is to draw in my radius. Here, we have two that we can connect, okay? And each of these is a radii, or each of these is a radius, and they have equal measurements of 10. Now, I want to find the length here between these two points on the circle, and to do that, I'm going to make use of the midpoint formula. Midpoint formula, as a reminder, is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. It's just the average of the x component and the y component. So in this case, my y is nice and simple, it's 0, but my x is 4 plus 20 divided by 2, so that gives me 12. So my center point here is 12, 0. Now I'm going to drop a line down, line segment down here, give myself a right triangle. Okay, And the hypotenuse is 10, and what's this long leg here? 12 minus 4, that would be 8. Again, this is going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle relationship. Coming back here, it is this one. When x equals 2, the scale factor is 2. Okay, So what this means is my k, my short leg here, the height has to be 6. So k is equal to 6. And there you have it. Hopefully I've convinced you of how important it is to master the 3-4-5 triangle. So go spend some time practicing it and you will be thankful when you come across it on the test. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!